we will not falter we will not be shaken we will not be stirred by the things that we see with our natural eyes but we will press in to the promises of God the promises of God which are yes he says yes I don't know who I'm talking to somebody's been crying out crying out crying out God will you move in my life God will you do this miracle will you show up and show off will you show yourself strong God will you do this thing will you move this obstacle somebody has been crying out according to a promise that he made your heart according to a promise that we find in Scripture some of you have been standing on it and crying out God when will you do it will you do it and his answer to you today is yes 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 I will yes I will so many came up to Jesus in the Bible and says will you heal will you do it will you deliver and he never turned them away he always said yes even the Canaanite woman with the child who needed deliverance he said children is the deliverance is the children's bread and at first he would not but his compassion got the best of him and she pressed in and he said what great faith you have every obstacle to the promise was facing her down the disciples were telling Jesus send her away because she cries out after us this poor woman was not even part of the covenant she was a Canaanite and her daughter ah, her daughter had a demon she was interceding for the one she loved Jesus blew her off Jesus said uh-uh I'm not gonna do this this is not for you this is not part of your portion this is not your you're not a covenant person I, I'm not gonna do this but she kept on pressing into the promise she could have been offended because God didn't move when she wanted him to move ah I don't know who I'm talking to she could have been offended because God would not immediately show up and make everything all right for her daughter after all it was a selfless request wasn't it she wasn't even asking for herself she was concerned about her daughter how could Jesus not immediately swoop in and do something to change the situation she could have been offended how many of you today are offended with God because he made you a promise in his word but you have not seen it come to pass yet you have not seen any any evidence at all that it ever will come to pass and you're offended offense is an obstacle waiting on God waiting on God waiting on God waiting on God John the Baptist was put into prison Herod put him into prison he was there waiting to die waiting to have his head handed to him and he sent his disciples to Jesus and said ask him this are you the Christ or shall we look for another offense entered his heart because God didn't do what John thought he would do this is the same John this is the same John the Baptist who baptized Jesus in the water in the River Jordan and saw the Holy Spirit ascending upon descending upon him like a dove and said this is the Christ he knew it was the Christ he was telling everybody else it was the Christ he didn't care he wasn't concerned when his disciples began to follow the Christ he said I must decrease that he might increase he had a revelation that this was the Christ he was the first one to get it before Peter even got it John got it but when he found himself in the prison when he found himself unable to help himself when he found himself in that trial he got offended because Jesus didn't come rescue him Jesus said go tell John the lame walk the blind see the deaf hear and blessed are those who are not offended with me we don't know sometimes why the promise doesn't seem to manifest we do know this though we do know this though all of God's promises are yes and amen we don't understand fully we can't see the big picture but I'll tell you the truth God is more concerned with you becoming like Jesus that he is about you getting an immediate breakthrough he'll bring the breakthrough but can you sustain the breakthrough can you hold on to what God is giving you with the character that you currently possess with the level of integrity that you walk in can you hold on to the breakthrough all his promises are yes and amen we have to press past the offense and not let go of the promise because it didn't happen when we thought it should when we wanted it to ah 
We cannot be offended with the Lord because he didn't move when we thought he would move. <laughs> Lazarus died. They sent word to Jesus, Lazarus is sick. And he waited three days on purpose, on purpose, on purpose. He waited three days. He finally showed up after he knew Lazarus has been dead, 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 dead. Not right after he died, but he was dead. He stinketh in the tomb. He'd been dead for days. Comes into the city and here's Martha. Of course, Martha runs out first. Oh Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. In other words, why did you let this happen, man? You could have stopped it. You could have kept my child from dying. You could have kept my marriage from falling apart. You could have kept that boss from firing me. You could have stopped it. You could have stopped it. You could have stopped it. You didn't let that have to, you didn't have to let this happen, but you did. I don't get it, God. Aren't you supposed to be good? We sing, oh, you're a good, good father. We write, read books called God is good and God's not angry at you and all these things. But then here I am in this bad position and you could have stopped it and you didn't. Why did you not come? You could have stopped my brother from dying. He said, I'll raise him again. I'll do something. I'll keep my word. I won't let you down. He said, I know, she said, I know that he'll be raised in the resurrection. He said, no, I am the resurrection. Whatever promise seems to be dead in your life, would you just remember that God is never late? Would you just remember that he is the resurrection even if it looks dead, even if it is dead? Would you just remember that all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes? Would you just remember that? All of his promises are yes and amen. He dealt with Martha and here comes Mary with the same question. But Mary came with less of an accusation. Martha came, it was more like an accusation. Mary, Mary came in worship. If you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus showed up and he raised up Lazarus from the dead. He said, Lazarus come forth and he did. And they had to unwrap the grave clothes and there it was. All of God's promises are yes and amen. I don't understand all the reasons why I get the overarching reason, the overarching reason why many times things don't happen when we want them to happen is because we're not ready. He's trying to form the character of Christ in us. Other times, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know why some people get healed, walk, walk up out of wheelchairs, get cured of cancer by the power of God and others don't. I don't get it, but I don't need to get it. And you don't need to get it. Don't be offended. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Don't be offended with God because it didn't happen when you wanted the way you wanted, the way you thought it should have been in your timing, in your way to your liking and your pleasure. God is good. All of his promises are yes and amen. The word amen means so be it. I mean, so be it. It means he's already accomplished it in the spirit. It is a done deal in the spirit realm. It is finished. It's there. He doesn't have to go do anything about it. It's a matter of by faith and patience, inheriting the promises of God. Isn't that what Hebrew says? By faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. By faith and patience, that means you got to wait for it, honey. You got to wait for it. Sometimes you got to wait for it. So father, help us today not to be offended with you, not to be offended with you because things aren't working out in our lives the way that we thought they should, because we found a scripture and it jumped off the page at us and we heard the still small voice or we received a prophecy or there was some kind of preacher that preached a message that inspired us. And we said, yes, Lord, I know that is for me. I'm taking it. I'm grabbing it. And then it didn't happen. We confessed it, we confessed it, we prayed it, we prayed it, and it's not happening. Help us, Lord, not to be offended in those moments, in those seasons, in those times, in those hours. When it seems like things should be going our way and they're not. When it seems like everything is falling apart. When it seems like relationships that we value the most are crumbling before our eyes and there is absolutely nothing we can do but walk away and hope for a better day. When it seems like the betrayals are coming so fast, so hard, so hot, so heavy that you don't even know who you can trust anymore. 
Help us, Lord, in those times to understand that many, 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 many times it's the warfare against the promise that we are walking through. It's the warfare against the prophecy that gave us the goosebump. It's the warfare against the prophecy that caused us to press in deeper to God. It's the warfare against that promise that caused us to read 12 books and set ourselves apart and consecrate ourselves. It's the warfare against that we are enduring. Those who endure to the end shall be saved. You will see the day of your salvation. You will see the day of your visitation. You will see the day of your breakthrough. In the meantime, hold on. The Lord says, hold on. Just hold on. Hold on to the promise. It's hard to do when the exact opposite of what you planned and what you purposed in the counsels of God seems to be hopeless, impossible. But the Bible says all things are possible to him who believes. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor heart has understood or perceived what God wants to do for us. So God, we thank you today. And we will hold on to the promise. And we will hold on to you when everything is going wrong, when it looks like all is lost, we will stand and we will not be offended, but we will see a bigger picture. We will wait upon you. We will mount up with wings as eagles so that we can get you a perspective on a thing. That's what we're going to do. That's how we're going to handle this disappointment. That is the way forward. It's not an accusation against God. It's not a bitter spirit toward the Holy Ghost. It is trusting him. Though he slay me, I will trust him. It's going to turn around. It's going to turn around. It's going to turn around. It is going to turn around in your favor. You just have to hold on. It's going to turn around in your favor. You just have to hold on.